Hey ceramic students, Mrs. New here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the garden steak project. This one is really fun. It's a quick and easy one. It makes a great gift. It's a fun spring project. So these are some examples of the garden steak and you can see it is, um, it's a garden steak. So this is a wooden dowel that we glue with some epoxy glue into the back of the glazeware once it's glazed and everything and then you can stick it in a plant in a house plant or you could even make it um, to be markers for your garden you could make ones that say like carrots and peas and whatever veggies you might be placing in your garden or they can just be decorative so these are a couple examples i've had around the classroom um, you can see one of the kind of main parts of this project is that they have the little pocket on the back and that that pocket is big enough to fit one of the dowels uh, that we have. So you can see there's a couple different diameters of dowels. This one's a little thicker, this one's a little thinner. And I try to have kind of a variety when we get to the um, time where we glue in the, the back. So anyway, this is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. So I'm gonna set these aside. And you can make these with any shape. I just happen to have a lot of flower ones here but I am going to use a small scrap of slab and then I did grab some cookie cutters. So things you need for this project, you want some cookie cutters. This is a little butterfly. Here's a um, hummingbird that would look cute. I've got some leaf shapes that might be fun. Here's another leaf shape. Um, I've got this little duck one. I've made several of these little uh, duck ones and, and put like go ducks and that one makes a cute gift if you have any Oregon Ducks fans in the house. Um, and then I do have two sets of these, which are just a really nice kind of flower shape. And you can even, um, you know, make a smaller one and pop it up or something like that. I also grabbed this little cool stamp container. This has a little wooden stamp, which has different tips that you can change out to add some texture. So I might use that. So I grabbed that. I grabbed some wooden stamps. This one I set, I found the letters that said grow. So I thought I might stamp that in one. And I have some slip and a serrated rib. And then the other thing I have that's really important is the straws. So they live in this container that says straws. Um, and you are gonna need, however many garden stakes you're gonna make, you're gonna want one for each garden stake that you make. So I'm gonna have those handy. So I went ahead and rolled out my slab. It's a little bit thinner than the slab roller because I don't want them to be too heavy when they're on the stick. Um, and I smoothed it out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I could do some texture mat. I could do a roller. I could do some kind of texture. For mine, I'm gonna stamp in a word. So I'm just gonna grab a cookie cutter without doing much texture yet. And I'm just gonna cookie cutter out all my shapes. So when you're making the garden stakes, my suggestion would be don't just make one, uh, make lots, you know, roll out a small slab, use as much as your, of your slab as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's make a bigger, um, what is this thing called again? Hummingbird. So I'm just kind of pulling this up. With any luck, it'll, pop out of there and I'll be able to just gently press this out and get the shapes that I want. And I'm gonna lose a little piece of that, but that's okay. So there's my hummingbird. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna set that aside. Let's do um, a flower, kind of a flower here. So what I'm saying is use all your clay, all right? So it's back to that, what I call grandma's cookie rule. So when you're rolling out the dough with grandma to make cookies, you wanna use all of your dough. I also wanna do a pop out on this one. I'm gonna make a smaller one of these so that I can slip and score it and uh, pop it up. So I'm gonna use that little extra piece right there of my slab and make a smaller one of these. This one's gonna go with this one. So I think that would look nice. And let's see, do I have much clay left here? I might have clay for one butterfly. Let's see, I think I can grab a butterfly right here um, on the edge. Okay, and you could do a texture mat or some stamping beforehand, but what I like to do is just kind of leave them plain and then do my decorating later. So now I've, I'm kind of done with this for now, but don't get rid of your extra sc scrap slabs. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna need these for in a minute. So I'm just gonna set these aside for now. And now I can grab my shapes that I made and start to decorate them. So maybe I try, you know, a stamp, maybe that I haven't used yet in the class. Um, and I could do, you know, just some stamping of texture. Oop, this one came off. 
Maybe I'll just use my finger and kind of do it this way. Okay, I could uh, recut out the shapes a little bit. This one got, like I feel like I could recut that out a little bit, smooth the edges, and just really use some nice craftsmanship with these. That one's looking okay. On this one, I wanna type in that word grow. So I'm gonna do that on this little guy. So this one's gonna go this way. So G, R, and you could tamp, you could type, you know, type in all kinds of different, um, you could write one that says grow or one that says bloom, or like I said, you could put the names of your different um, vegetables. Like you could write one that says carrots or broccoli or uh, whatever your different veggies are. And I'm gonna use some metal stamps on this one. And just again, adding some detail and some texture, whatever you decide to do to sort of decorate yours. I might wanna go ahead and put an eye on this one since it is a hummingbird and maybe do some decorating on the wings, okay? I just can't leave it alone, I wanna do more. <laughs> okay, let's do a little bit more stamping on this one and you get the idea. Okay, so just make them fun and unique. And if you do have ones that you want to um, do, you know, add popping out pieces, so let's move to this one. I can go ahead and slip and score that popping out piece. I've got my slip here and I've got my serrated rib. So I'm gonna score this up add a little slip for this piece that's gonna that's gonna pop up go ahead and slip and score that on so think about it in layers you can do different layers i would caution you not to make them too thick and heavy because the dowels can only handle so much weight um, but you can slip and score on make sure you press really good i would go around that with a wet paintbrush and just um, clean that up a little bit and then maybe i could do some stamping on this one or some drawing on it. I could personalize it. I could type in, you know, mom, dad, I don't know, a name. I could type in a word, whatever I wanna do. Okay, so you get the idea. So you're gonna decorate all of them however you want them. But here's kind of the important part, and that is the back and figuring out how to make the little pocket for the dowel. So after I do all my decorating, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. And I wanna pretend that my straw is the stick, is the dowel, okay? So like this one, you need to figure out which direction your um, little creature or flower is gonna go. So like if you want it to fly like that, do you want it to fly straight up and down? So I think for mine, I'll, I'll tilt it just a little bit. I'm gonna pretend that the straw is the stick and now I'm gonna make the pocket. So any of that extra scrap slab I have, um, what I can do is just kind of flatten that out again. And I'm gonna cut out kind of a tombstone shape. I grab a needle tool. So here's my scrap slab. Here's my tombstone shape. And I want you to consider the size of your um, cutout, you know, make it relative to the size of your cutout. So there's my kind of tombstone shape. Then I'm gonna take it on my finger and just sort of get it into this pocket um, kind of shape before I form it over the straw. So the straw is gonna be my placeholder. So once I get my pocket, I'm gonna, you know, kind of pretend that I'm pushing it down around. And then what I like to do is kind of mark it and then I do have to pick this back up and I have to slip and score this. So I'm gonna put some slip and score around the edge of this and kind of around where I marked. And this is why you'd wanna do any of your decorating on the front of your garden stakes before you add the pocket. That's really important because once I put the pocket on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my straw back the straw, um, once I put the pocket on, I don't wanna flip it back over. It's gonna stay this way on the greenware shelf. So that's why all my decorating has to be done beforehand, okay? So now I'm gonna blend this on there. I could use a little wooden tool, I can use my finger, I can use a wet paintbrush a little bit, but I wanna make sure that that's on there really good. And I do that with the straw in here, because again, if I didn't have the straw, then I might smush that closed and I want to make sure I have room to glue my stick in there afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that one aside and I'm just gonna keep working. So here's my one that says grow. So I want it to go this way. I'm gonna find a little piece of scrap slab or you know, I might need to roll out a little bit more but I'm trying to just kind of use what I had here. 
and I'm gonna cut out that tombstone shape or that pocket shape and figure out um, kind of, I just use my finger and kind of make a pocket like that and figure out where it's gonna go. So the curved part of the pocket goes on top. The curved part of the, the tombstone shape goes up on top. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out where this is gonna go. I might be able to make it not so wide. And I'm gonna mark it. Now the other thing is I don't want my pocket to show on the front of my garden stake. So see how right there, I need to make sure it's not poking out behind there. So I kind of mark it and then I do my slip and score and then I put my straw back in and then I blend it. Now the question is, can I leave my straw inside the pocket on the green marsh shelf? The answer is no, okay? I don't want you to leave them in there. You can use them while you're building and while you're blending, but once I get all of these built and onto a board and I'm moving that board onto the greenware shelf before I end for the day, I wanna make sure that all of the straws are pulled out. The reason for that, you guys, is that when clay dries, it shrinks and it will shrink over that straw and it will crack um, and it's just harder to get it out. It can break your project and it's just hard to get it out. So you can see right there, I don't want it to show. Okay, so I'm gonna get all of these done and on a board. Let's see if I have a little board handy, I don't. So pretend I've got my board, I've got all of them done. And at the end of the, the day, when I set them over there, I'm gonna pull these back out of here. Okay, and they're gonna dry like this. Now they do dry on their fronts because I don't wanna squish the pocket. So that's why it's important that you do all your designing uh, before you add the little pockets to the back, okay? So that is the garden stake project. And um, again, look through the cookie cutters. There's all different fun, fun shapes, fun textures. Um, you can stamp on textures. This person even drew on their own textures. Have fun with this one, you guys. It's beautiful, it's spring, and let's celebrate by making some fun garden stakes for ourselves and our friends and our family. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye.